Hi, this is Jen Lasser with Adobe Analytics Product Management. In this video, I'm going to walk you through the Adobe Analytics Fall 2017 release. This release is available for all Analytics Solution owners, and also we have some new Analytics Cloud integrations that are available for all Analytics and Audience Manager Solution owners. This release will include Analytics Cloud integration improvements, virtual report suite enhancements, analysis workspace updates, updates to virtual analyst, as well as an update to report builder. I'm going to go through each of these at a high level, um, but we also have some supporting videos on our YouTube channel that goes into each of these in a bit more depth, so be sure to check those out. So I'll start with the Analytics Cloud integrations. We're excited to announce Audience Analytics, which is the ability to send Audience Manager segments back to Adobe Analytics. This completes the round-trip data handoff between these two solutions. Um, today we offer server-side forwarding, which allows you to send analytics data to Audience Manager. This new integration will allow you to share Audience Manager segments back to analytics. Uh, it's the first productized integration that we have between a DMP and an analytics engine in the market, so very excited to bring this to our customers. This integration will be a server-side integration that will stitch the, the audience manager segments directly into the analytics hit that we were going to collect anyway. So there's no additional server call costs for audience analytics. The integrated data will show up in analytics as two new dimensions. The first is audience's ID, and the second is audience's name, which is a classification of the ID itself. And these dimensions can be used throughout analytics, just like any other dimension that it collects. Uh, for example, in analytics segmentation to combine with other behavioral data that you've collected there, um, or in analysis workspace flow visualizations if you want to see how visitors are moving from one audience to another, um, in Venn visualizations if you want to visualize the overlap between different audiences, and even in segment comparison if you want to be able to compare and contrast to audiences that you've sent over from Audience Manager. In support of this new integration, we also have made improvements to server-side forwarding. Server-side forwarding today is at the tracking server level, um, but what the uh, improvements we are introducing are is the ability to turn on server-side forwarding at the report suite level directly in the Analytics Admin Console. This is something that's important for the integration because it will ensure you have all the necessary prerequisites in place to successfully turn that integration on. You no longer need to contact customer care to schedule uh, turning server-side forwarding on. It's something you can completely manage yourself um, from the admin console. So I'll move into the updates to virtual report suites next. Virtual report suites today allow you to apply a segment to a parent report suite to create a subset of data that you want to give business users access to. Um, and that's kind of where virtual report suite functionality ends today. So with two improvements that we're making to virtual report suites, we're going to be introducing two new tabs. Um, the first tab is the visit definition tab, and then we're calling this contextual sessions or report time processing. On the visit definition tab, you're going to be able to flexibly define what a visit is. So traditionally, Adobe Analytics has determined a visit based on 30 minutes of inactivity. This timeout is not something that you can very easily change. Um, so we're bringing this to the Virtual Report Suite workflow, and it's something that you can um, determine in the Virtual Report Suite itself and will be applied at report runtime. So for example, if you're a mobile app marketer and you want to change the visit timeout to be something like five minutes, which is more applicable for mobile app behavior, you'll be able to do that. Or if you um, have had a, a back-end system that you've been trying to align to that has a different timeout window, like 20 minutes instead of 30 minutes, you'll be able to use this functionality as well. This tab will also include a couple more advanced settings for mobile app visits as well. You'll be able to decide if you want background hits and app launches to trigger a new visit or not. The second new tab that we'll be adding to virtual report suites is a components tab. In this tab, you'll be able to fully curate 
the dimensions and components that are available within a virtual report suite to your end business users. If you've used curation and analysis workspace before, this is that same concept, but instead of applying it to each project, it's something you can apply at the report suite level itself. In the component tab, you're going to be able to include and exclude dimensions, metrics, segments, um, including calculated metrics and date ranges as well. And you'll also be able to rename the components to be something that is a bit more meaningful for your business users. For example, if you're giving a report suite um, access to your mobile team, you can adjust the term of unique visitors to something like unique devices or app users. We've also added a data preview to the virtual report suite um, builder so you can see how many hits, visits, and visitors will be a part of the um, suites that you're creating. Um, I should mention before I move on to the next section that the contextual sessions are available in analysis workspace only. Um, the, the product compatibility will be listed out in this new preview, so be sure to check that um, to make sure you know where your virtual report suite can be used. All right, we'll move into the updates we've made to analysis workspace. The first is we're introducing a new visualization called Maps. Maps will allow you to visually uh, look at all of your location data. Um, they can be based off of either the IP address based geo dimensions or the mobile location lat and long data. You'll have the op option for the mobile lat long data if you have mobile location turned on in analytics admin. So the map will be fully interactive. You'll be able to scroll in and out. The data will adjust as you get closer um, and, and scroll in further. You'll also be able to adjust the size of the, the bubbles you see here in the um, example and the colors as well. There'll also be a heat map option if you um, want to use that as your visualization instead of bubbles. So very interactive. Um, new visualization that we've brought to Analysis Workspace. We've also made a, a set of zero state improvements. Um, we, we call the zero state the initial landing page of, of Workspace when you first open up a blank project. So we've made quite a few updates here. Uh, first of all, when you add in a blank panel, we'll now show you all of the different visualization starting points or analysis starting points um, for your project. So rather than um, adding in a blank panel and, and only having the option to add a freeform table, you'll now be able to jump right into customer journey visualizations like Fallout and Flow, um, choose a histogram or a VIN, or even the new map. We've also added new tags throughout Workspace to highlight the new visualizations and, and call awareness to some of those new features that are being added to the tool. Uh, lastly, we've improved the contrast on the far left rail so that the panels, visualization, and component icons are a bit more apparent um, to some new users to Analysis Workspace. Continuing along the vein of zero-state improvements, we've also improved our freeform table. Um, we are now including an animated GIF to illustrate the, the paradigm of dragging and dropping from the left rail into the, the center drop zones. I'm um, hoping that this will, again, help some, some folks that are newer to Analysis Workspace um, learn how to build projects quickly. We've also improved the drop zones um, to help encourage best practice component usage. So rather than saying drop data here in the, the table, the column header, and the segment drop zone, we'll now encourage you to drop a dimension, metric, or segment in those areas. Um, even though you, you truly can drop anything anywhere. We've also added a granularity selector to trended visualizations. So rather than having to unhide a, a table that the visualization is based on to adjust your view from daily to weekly, um, you'll be able to now, from the visualization settings gear, adjust the granularity from minute all the way up to year. So we're hoping that this improvement saves everybody a lot of time um, when they're building out their visualizations. We've also improved the uh, table data source settings. So 
Um, in a couple releases ago, we improved the visualization data source settings to make it easier for you to manage the, the source tables and understand um, what's powering a visual. We are now carrying that through to freeform table and cohort tables themselves. So when you click the dot in the top left corner of a table, you'll be able to see the list of linked visualizations from that table. You'll be able to also hover over any of the linked visualizations and we'll highlight it in the project so you can understand the relationship between table and visual. You'll also uh, have the ability to hide the source table directly from this area as well. So we've made a handful of other improvements to Analysis Workspace. Um, the last one I'll mention in depth is the improvements to the segment drop zone. Um, the segment drop zone today supports dimension items, segments, and date ranges. When dropped into this zone at the top of a panel, we will automatically create a segment for you that is internal to the project. Um, we're improving this to now also allow for full dimensions to be added to this area as well as events. So hoping that the, the uh, ability to drop anything anywhere in Analysis Workspace now even in the segment drop zone will um, improve the analysis you guys are able to do and, and really save you a lot of time as you're building out your projects. So the next set of improvements I wanted to uh, discuss are around our virtual analyst. Virtual Analyst is a combination of anomaly detection, contribution analysis, and intelligent alerts. So the first improvement is the in introduction of contribution analysis tokens for analysis workspace. Any customer that is entitled to contribution analysis today will now be able to run full unlimited variable contribution analysis in analysis workspace for a limited number of runs per month. If you've previously been entitled to unlimited dimension contribution analysis, uh, you've already had this capability. Um, if you're not entitled to contribution ana analysis, that will still hold true uh, in Analysis Workspace. Um, this is for customers who have been entitled to three dimension contribution analysis and have previously only been able to run that in reports and analytics. So for those folks, we're, we're now going to let you run unlimited variable contribution analysis in Workspace and uh, there will be a limited number of tokens per month that you can use to run that analysis. You'll have the ability to restrict this usage so that you can avoid uh, token misuse by different business users. And, and finally I want to mention that the reports and analytics access that you have will still remain true. So if you have three dimension entitlement today in reports and analytics that will still be the case. This is an update for analysis workspace only. Um, we wanted to do this though to, um, to let you see the full power of contribution analysis run across all the dimensions um, that we collect for you. Another virtual analyst improvement that we're adding in is the ability to renew intelligent alerts. So once an alert expires, there hasn't uh, to date been an option to quickly uh, renew that alert so that it can continue to run further. Um, so now from the alert manager, you'll be able to select the uh, alert that has expired, or even if it hasn't expired, um, you can select it and click the renew option, and this will bump out the expiration date to be one year from the day that you click the renew button. So hoping this makes it a little bit easier to manage your alerts. So the, the final area of improvements that I wanted to cover is within Report Builder. <clears throat> In Report Builder, we're adding the ability to edit metrics in bulk. To date, you've been able to edit um, multiple report suites at once, um, segments, date ranges, things like that, but you haven't been able to edit metrics across a set of requests. So we've added in for this release the ability to add, replace, or remove metrics across a group of requests all at once. You can do this by highlighting all the requests and getting to this option from the right-click menu, or you can uh, go to the Edit Multiple option within the Manage window. So very excited to be able to uh, bring this to Report Builder. Um, we know it's been a, a very long-awaited feature. So with that, I will um, 
just give a quick recap of the, the improvements that we've brought through this release. Uh, we've made some, uh, introduced some new integrations for the Analytics Cloud, made some enhancements to virtual report suites, improved analysis workspace by introducing a new visualization and adding in other um, great new features. We've added a couple things to Virtual Analyst and also Report Builder as well. So hope you guys enjoy this uh, new release and all the features that um, we're, we're building into the product. And thanks for listening.